couple years ago, Ricardo Diaz made a great program called Show Cockpit. But what if you want to use a nano control too with Show Cockpit? Hey guys, my name is Caleb Hornschmeyer, and I want to show you guys today how to use Ricardo Diaz's Show Cockpit with MIDI devices that he has not yet written a driver for. I really like the Nano Control 2 because of its size, but he hasn't yet written a driver for it, and I want to be able to use these encoder knobs, even though they are not endless, as endless encoder knobs in the Grand MA. Now, if you want to go with just the faders and buttons, um, you can use the generic MIDI drivers that Ricardo Diaz provides. I have not yet figured out how to um, map the generic MIDI drivers to become encoder knobs if they are not endless. In fact, I even plugged in a uh, Novation Impulse and it didn't pick up the endless knobs that I had in there. So what I did is go through Bone MIDI Translator, take a MIDI device like this, change the values and swap the values of my notes and control changes to replicate exactly an APC40 so that by the time all of my MIDI notes and control change values go into Show Cockpit, it thinks it's an APC40 and behaves exactly as if it were an APC40. Here is the APC40 MIDI map if you need to reference it. Um, I know I did many times. So you can pause this or screenshot it right now, but I am going to take you into Core Control Editor and show you how to get started. We're going into Core Control Editor to change most of our notes and control change values to match that of an APC40. You can do this with your Nano Control connected to Bohm. It just might not show up in your target device. Just make sure that you hit Receive Scene Data and see that message so that you can make sure you're talking. Now all of your note values are displayed in letters, so here are the numbers for the notes. Change all of those to match what I have and then go in the upper left corner and set your LED mode to external so that RD tools can send MIDI notes to your uh, button lights. Write your scene data, make sure it's set flashes scene data is written, and then exit out and save changes to a file so that you can recall it later. And I'm going to take you through the BOEM file. Note that I have different variables set for each fader and I'll get into that later. Uh, my encoder clutch basically takes all of my control change values and dumps them if activated, and that's the button that activates it. And then I am going to walk you through my RD tools show file. And this is a file for a real APC40 that I use with a show that I do. Um, here's kind of an overview of it. I've got the button pad set up to execs 101 through like 150 something or 60. And then I do have some scene launch buttons, five of them um, coming up that I am also going to replicate on the APC40 and those were the lower left five values that I gave you. Here are my attribute scrolls. Note that sometimes you have to change the values for your attribute scrolls to make them effective with that parameter that you're scrolling. So now we're going to build it from scratch. Add an APC40 as your uh, base MIDI device and then add a Grand MA2 as your lighting. Your APC40 in here is going to connect to Bohm MIDI Translator on the input and the output. And then we're going to map our Grand MA real quick. Faders 1 through 8, our execs 1 through 8, our button. Make sure that you start with button 3 being your top row so that button 1 can end up as your bottom, but bottom button. Uh, this is opposite of most Akai devices because we are replicating a uh, nano control right now. Most Akai products start on the lower left corner being their first note. We're going to add our attribute scrolls and our um, encoder wheels. Here is our attribute dim and then our 
red scroll, which is represented by color RGB1, green RGB2, and blue RGB3. And by the way, sometimes the value seems to change in a Grand MA, the amount that you're scrolling, and you might have to alter this in RD Tools. I'm adding a previous and next button to the arrow left and arrow right so that I can next and previous through my lights. So let's go into Granime and start a session. You can use the one or one two seven zero zero one. You have to enable remotes, and then you have to go to user and profile setup and create a profile for yourself and password, other than the default one. And then you have to hit login in the lower right corner. I'm already logged in, so I didn't push it. Enter that same IP address in GranMA2, and then enter your username and password, and flip that switch to login. If you're having errors, you can turn on a system monitor in GranMA2, or the uh, command line feedback, and that might give you some uh, intel as to why it's not behaving. So let's build the BOM file. I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to name this faders. This preset is going to just be for our faders. And what you want to do in BOM is create your first translator to be as accurate as possible. And then duplicate down for the rest of your um, translators. So this is going to be a control change input from the uh, nano control on control change value 0. And it is going to set the variable OO to its control change value. Its outgoing action is going to be a MIDI message or a control change on control change value 7 or number 7 with value OO and it's going to be on channel 1 the other ones aren't and please turn on swallow so that um, it dumps the mini message after translating it and doesn't pass on that same mini message duplicate down and then change your control change values set it 0 through 7 and then your outgoing action is going to be control change number 7 all the way down, but the channels are going to increase, and that's to match the APC40. And note that when you're entering these channel numbers, 0 is 1 on the number pad, so if you press 5, it'll enter channel 4. And if you're using this for high performance, if you're going to be fleeing a lot of faders, I would set different variable letters to uh, each individual fader. Patch your BOM so that your BOM, uh, BOM input is set to the nano control and your nano control is set to the BOM virtual output. And then I flashed it. I saw my mini message come up there. I can see it come up in RD tools. So let's move all of my faders. We seem to be working just fine. I am going to change the LED feedback, but I also want to test my buttons. So open window, I just hit edit off. You might need to hit edit initialization, which is under that button as well. I've had mixed results with both. So I turn to the default when the execs are off to have that top row lit so that I know where my finger is going to land when I'm in show. And then I'll go to live and make those changes. And there it is. We're going to test our encoder knobs now.
and we're going to build our encoder clutch. Basically, it doesn't matter how far we turned that encoder knob down, eventually it would stop before we reached our desired number. So what this does, we have a clutch pedal, which is going to be a button of our choosing. I'm going to choose this button and capture its value when I press the button down. So if I press that button down, then it will activate the preset encoder clutch. It's kind of like as if I were to push a pedal down. Um, likewise, if I depress the button, I want to capture that value. And if I do that, I want it to deactivate that preset. So that the preset's only active when I press the button. What this preset will do, and turn swallow on for that encoder clutch pedal in addition to this encoder clutch that you're making now. We're going to make this capture our control change values, swallow them, and not pass them on to RD tools. So duplicate down, set all of your control change values. It could be at any value. There's no outgoing action at all. It seems like a pointless translator, but it's very meaningful. And what this will do is Select our fixture, scroll through the color wheel, and then press the button, change position our in, on our encoder wheel, and continue scrolling the wheel. So I'm going to bring up an LED now, and uh, at this point I was accidentally hitting the dim knob instead of the color red knob. So I'm going to go on a goose chase. There we go, I found it. So spin that knob down, press the button, change positions, and you can spin it the rest of the way down. Um, when you're doing pan and tilt, you shouldn't have to press that button as much, but hold it to set it to center, and then you can make your pan and tilt adjustments. What I'm going to do here is a stress test because I want to make sure this can hold up and show. Every time I push that fader up, it sends 127 messages through my system. And every time I pull it down, it sends another 127 messages. So if I do something like that, it sends about a thousand, almost a thousand messages through my system in a second. Actually, way over that because I bring it up and back down. But what happened in this example is I gave it a stress test and I seem to have froze my GUI because when I flashed that fader, Granime still worked, but my MIDI in and MIDI out light were still locked on when I came back to my computer a couple minutes later. So I opened up Task Manager went to see what was going on. I've never had that happen before. I think it was just a freak accident, but I did find something interesting with Show Cockpit. While its performance on the CPU goes up considerably faster than Bohm, it does this interesting thing where it hits about 29% or 30% and then stops responding, but it's clearly still responding. It says it's not responding in uh, the application window, but everything is just fine. I call this heating up. After it heats up and you let it rest for a while, it'll cool down and restore back to a normal percentage.
So now it's back. I wanted to see if the buttons were very taxing, but obviously they are not. So I went and continued uh, testing it by fader abuse. And the entire time it worked out just fine. Here is the generic MIDI drivers for RD Tools. You're going to add your driver inside your input and output device directly to the device you're controlling. In this case, the Nano Control. And you're going to add your Granime 2 and log in. And then um, avoid hitting mapping. Um, instead, double click on your uh, generic MIDI in Elements. Turn on Enable Learn and hit all of your faders to get them up on the screen. And then go to Granime 2, hit these three dots, and go to Generic MIDI. And that'll bring up those faders you just brought in. Set those faders to your execs in Grand MA. And then enable learn again and record all of your buttons. We're going to test it and we can see that we have LED feedback. Sometimes I've had problems with the LED feedback. Usually I find a couple resets on things and unplugging things, shutting down programs, turning them back on. Usually helps the situation. Um, in this case I played with the custom feedback for a while, but here were the results I got immediately. Um, I wanted to turn the feedback on and feedback off of just that one note to 127. But what it did is seem to lock up the feedback for the rest of that exec. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope this helps with your shows down the road. And thank you Ricardo Diaz for making an awesome program. I know I'm kind of butchering it and using it not quite as you intended. But uh, I promise as you start making more drivers and more products I will use them and purchase them. But yeah, thank you everybody for watching. If you want to see more content just like this in the future then subscribe and turn on notifications. Otherwise you might not see one of my videos. I just smacked my mini controller. So thank you, everybody. Uh, hopefully I get to see all of you at some point in my life. Have great gigs, and talk to you all later. Bye.